students, welcome to Lucia's workshop channel. My name is Lucia. My skid steer is still unfinished, but it's ready for the first tests, and I can't wait to start them. But unluckily, this winter we have almost no snow at all, only ice. And I'm not ready to wait for the next winter to try out the loader in the snow. Therefore, I decided to go 600 kilometers to my uncle's house in the neighboring region, where there is a lot of snow and I can arrange real tests. The loader needs to be thoroughly tested in real conditions uh, to understand how the entire chain of the hydraulic system works. So, before continuing the build, I just need to find this out. Of course, I have calculations, but I'm a person of practice and I need to try it out. And I've already bought a trailer and made an excess ramp to get inside. So, let's go! It was my husband who drove the skid steer into the trailer. He wouldn't let me in because it was too scary to do it for the first time. The ramp could suddenly break or the loader could fall of it or roll over or something like that. And it also was my husband who drove the car with the trailer, because he has quite a lot of experience driving with a trailer, but I don't have it at all, and it would be unsafe for me to drive a car with a large loaded trailer. Here's my uncle's yard and the main snow drift that needs to be removed. There's a huge amount of snow here, even the fence is not uh, really visible. And there is also snow up to the roof near the barn. But it's still necessary to get to the main snow drift, first cleaning the snow at the gate, so that the loader can drive into the yard. That's what I'll do first. spent the night in the trailer and at night it was minus 20 degrees Celsius, so everything is covered in frost. The battery stayed in the warm, so we'll plug it in and see how it starts. Since there is a lot of snow to be taken out of the yard and at the same time not to fill up the entire entrance to the house with it, I decided to first move the base of the pile a little in order to be able to drive as close and dump the snow as far as possible.
So the loader finally got into the yard to clean this snow drift and it's huge. Almost the entire length of the yard. Here I'm still walking, but it doesn't end. Something's wrong. Oh. Uh, the muffler was torn off where the pipe is attached to the body. I need to think about what to do. Getting it started. At least the bucket needs to be dumped out and then we'll see. By the way, I decided to measure the height of the bucket while the loader is outside. The bucket is positioned horizontally, the tape measure is hooked and the height of the bucket is 255 centimeters. Now I want to show the whole picture to understand the amount of work that was done. I'm standing on a pile of snow. A long hill on the right was collected by a large tractor earlier and a pile of frozen snow on the left was taken out from the gate and from the yard by my loader. It may seem that there is not much snow here, but in fact a lot has been removed. And all this was done by my little metal friend, which is now preparing to go home. So we finally returned home and let me explain why I decided to stop working. After the muffler broke, I was afraid that suddenly something else would break and I was very far from the workshop and as my main task was testing, I decided that uh, it was done enough for the first tests to make conclusions about the pros and cons. Now actually the conclusions. The first thing I want to note is the smooth operation of the hydraulic system because it was important for me. Uh, I wanted um, the loader not to be jerky. 
However, I realized how to control the joysticks in order to achieve this only about after two hours or so. And even later, how to clean compressed frozen snow, which you can't just uh, scoop up with a bucket. But all this is a matter of skill. And most importantly, the hydraulic system works smoothly. The loader worked a total of six and a half hours on this trip, and in general, everything worked normally. Well, except uh, the muffler, but it was my mistake, uh, and fortunately, it's fixable. In addition, I noted several other points that need to be improved. The first one is that in some places, high-pressure hoses rub against the body. Uh, this can be fixed simply by winding the hoses and processing the metal edges. The second point is when I was moving with a load and the boom arm wasn't lowered to the end, it had small fluctuations to the right and left. And as far as I know, this is normal for skid steers. But friends, if you have a real practice of driving a loader, please write in the comment section if this is correct. Nevertheless, the boom arm didn't uh, beat against the cabin, although the cabin itself fluctuated on bumps because it still uh, stands um, only on a few tack welds and is still unfinished. Plus, not all the straighteners that are supposed to be installed on the boom racks are still installed there. The third point is that we had uh, to drive up the ramp quite fast at home, because the loader refused to drive in slowly and the engine stalled. According to the calculations, there should be enough power for this, and I had a feeling that there was not a lack of power, but uh, something was suffocating the hydraulics. Most likely it's about setting up the valves, uh, so I have to deal with it in the future. In general, I'm very happy with the results of the tests, and moreover, when you go to something for a long time and when you finally feel the result, it's a so wonderful feeling. I bet many of you are familiar with it. Friends, if you liked this video, I would appreciate your like and comment. This is important for me and for the YouTube algorithms. With that, I say bye-bye to you. See you in the next videos.